everybody. So, uh, this is a very difficult video for me to make, um, but it's an important one. For those who don't know me personally, my name is Ariel. I've been married for uh, coming on four years now. Uh, I've known my husband since I was 16. Um, we've been dating since we were 16. He's my high school sweetheart and the love of my life. And um, about two years or so into marriage, uh, we were both doing well. We had nice jobs and a nice home. And um, we decided that we wanted to start a family. It turns out it's not as easy for everybody um, as you would hope. So uh, my story is that growing up, um, I always had a lot of pain um, in kind of my belly region. Um, and I was always told that that was normal, that it came with the time of the month, and that that was all fine. And um, I was basically just put on birth control um, just to help with the pain and was never told what the pain was. In college, uh, when I was engaged, I decided I didn't want to be on birth control um, anymore and that I wanted to practice natural family planning once I was married. I always thought I was really good at natural family planning because uh, we didn't get pregnant. And I, you know, took really good care of making sure where I was in my cycle and all of that. Um, and then it turns out that that pain that I had felt when I was a teenager came back. Um, it actually started out as pain in my leg and I uh, was actually treated at a hospital for it because it was extremely painful. They did an MRI scan on my leg and found an inflamed nerve. And when they basically ruled everything else out and realized the pain was only happening during certain parts of my cycle because I knew very detailed where my cycle was because I was practicing natural family planning, um, that it was in fact something called endometriosis. Now, I'd never really heard of this before outside of nursing school because I was in nursing school at the time and I kind of knew what it was, um, but I was so surprised to find out that apparently endometriosis can go anywhere in your body and it had developed in my leg and that there was a nerve in my leg that was actually dying because this crazy thing was wrapped around it and was suffocating it basically. So they put me back on birth control just to um, try to stop it, basically. And um, that did help in the short term, and then eventually I went back off of the birth control. And uh, the pain came back, and I basically did all of these natural um, remedies and everything, anything I could think of, any research I could do to try to find ways to make myself feel better. And um, I was diagnosed with endometriosis when I was 20 years old. I was never really told that it could cause infertility. I was just concerned about my leg and so were the doctors and so once that was under control and I was fine, that was it. Until about two years ago. Me and my husband decided that we wanted to maybe start thinking about having a family. You know, I knew where I was in my cycle and I made sure that we did everything we could to try to have a baby. And so when nothing happened for a few months, I was like, okay, well, sometimes people, it takes a little while, so we kept, just kept going. So I started taking some supplements and things to try to help. Um, and basically a few months later, nothing still had happened. There were so many times that I was just convinced, oh, this is the month, this is the month that's gonna happen and then to take a pregnancy test and to see that not pregnant sign was very difficult. So after about 11 months of literally trying everything, I, we saw doctors and so we, like I said, I took every supplement you could think of, special massages and like castor oil packs and all these things that people would probably roll their eyes for. I feng shui our apartment. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, so many ovulation tests, like everything, basal body temperature. So finally, after 11 months, I said, all right, well, we're not, this isn't happening on our own, so let's call a doctor. So we decided to go with Massachusetts General Hospital Fertility Center, and um, after one year of trying and no luck, we saw a doctor. It uh, turns out that our worst fears were realized and that because of this disease that I have, 
it's extremely difficult for us to have children. Heartbreaking to find out, and um, I was not prepared for that. So, <sighs> yeah. So um, we found out it won't be impossible, but it would be very difficult. Um, and I asked the doctor, is there anything else I can do? As what can I do? Um, and uh, we decided to move forward and try some medicines and try some fertility drugs, um, try all these kinds of things. And so far, nothing has worked and nothing has happened. And uh, it's been probably the hardest road that I've ever walked through. Um, and uh, we wound up finding this really wonderful doctor who, believe it or not, uh, for those wondering, um, is a pro-life IVF doctor, if that makes any sense to you Catholics out there. Um, my faith is very important to me and very important to my husband, um, and it's really been the thing that has gotten me through this very difficult time, and I wanted to find a doctor that respected that. She has um, promised us that our wishes will be met. She actually has worked with Orthodox um, Jewish uh, clients and um, patients, and so she understands what what our wishes are as Catholics and what we expect and hope, and that we want our fertility treatments treated in that manner, um, where we respect life and with no exception. And she was um, very open to that and, and understood our wishes, and that has been wonderful. Long story short, I'm making this video because it felt like the secret. I don't know why women feel this way um, about their bodies and their fertility. It's difficult, and it's not something anybody signs up for. You don't get a checklist at the beginning of your life. Uh, saying, hey, what do you want to deal with for the rest of your time on this earth? And people don't check off the infertility box. I don't know why it's so secretive. I, um, I'm a maternity nurse, and I've had so many patients that have similar stories to me. And people don't talk about it. And I don't understand why it's such a secret. Um, it's painful. Uh, emotionally and physically and I just want a conversation to be started because I don't think there is one right now it's a, a very closeted world the infertility world there shouldn't be shame I was secretive about it and I don't know why I was and so it finally occurred to me that there's nothing to be ashamed of I didn't choose this and there's nothing I could have done to have my body be any different. It's not a lifestyle thing. I've tried everything, special fertility diets, special anti-inflammatory diets, special smoothies, all kinds of stuff. And I mean, it's not something that you choose. I want to start a conversation with women out there that if you have ever been a part of this world, you shouldn't be afraid to give yourself a voice, give this disease a voice, and stand up for yourself and say it's not okay to just have my pain and have my worry shoved under a rug and given a pill um, to fix it because that's not what fixes it. There is no cure for endometriosis and there is basically very few treatments. Uh, it, it can cause infertility. It's been the most difficult thing I have ever done in my whole life is uh, going from delivering babies and wanting one of my own and, and now I'm at this point where I'm like <sighs> just praying so hard. Um, and we did look into adoption. Uh, unfortunately, adoption is between $20,000 and $30,000 for one adoption. And unfortunately, that cost is prohibitive to us. So we've decided we're just going to try our best to treat this problem um, and try things that will help. Uh, last year, I just did our taxes and, uh, or has just started our taxes, and I saved all the receipts. And in one year, we haven't even done 
um, like IVF or IUIs, if you guys know what those are. We haven't even done those fertility treatments. It's literally just been drugs and monitoring and um, medications and doctor's visits. And in one year, we've spent about $8,000 out of pocket. So our insurance covered a good chunk, but we have paid about $8,000 of our own life savings, basically, to try to get this to happen. And so that has been very difficult. We've basically used our savings on trying to get this far. Even the tests that it took to determine how severe my endometriosis was, I think that test alone, out of pocket, was around $1,500 that we, that we had to pay, and insurance covered the rest. So the long and short of it is that in about three to four months, once we've saved up enough and we are gonna start some more invasive fertility treatments. It's the most expensive part of infertility, and um, it's been very difficult to hear that that's gonna be our only option. And uh, basically consumes your life for about two months to try to do these procedures. Um, but we're, we're there, and we are, we have mentally, uh, spiritually come to terms with the fact that it's very difficult for people with my disease to have children. And uh, where we are right now is if I could go and do this tomorrow, I would. Um, but it's very difficult financially, even with insurance, because in Massachusetts they do cover fertility treatments with insurance. But we have about a $5,000 deductible, which means we have to spend about $5,000 a year before our insurance will start paying for anything. And I mean, it's still cheaper than adoption, which is so devastating because I wouldn't adopt a child. Um, and it's just so difficult that that's the only thing standing in our way is the cost. Um, but the long and short of it is that we have decided to come out of the infertility closet and I'm no longer being secretive about this. I want people to be aware of what this is and I want women to be aware that pain is not normal. It's not okay to be sick constantly during parts of your cycle. That's not okay and it shouldn't be okay that women are just told, oh, that's just the way it is, because it's not. There's something wrong when that, when you're in that much pain. Because it is so expensive, we have decided to set up a fertility fund, and um, anyone is welcome to donate to it. Um, even $10 would cover the cost of parking at Massachusetts General Hospital for the day. Um, you know, $50 is the cost of the copay of the medicine that we're on right now. Um, there's all these little things that add up. And even if, you know, a bunch of family wanted to give five bucks to the fertility fund, it would add up to the point where we might be able to move forward with our next step. So, um, really the crux of the video is to say that you shouldn't be ashamed. No one should be ashamed of their body and ashamed of something that they did not choose for themselves. Um, I believe that God has given me this to walk through, not um, have it just be a burden that I have to carry, that I can share with the world, with all of you, that, that there's a lot of us out there that have really struggled and um, it pains my heart that people have to go through it alone. <sighs> for all of you out there, um, I say a prayer every night for every woman in the world and every man in the world that is walking through this because it's so difficult and you really need to um, lean on your faith a lot. So uh, I pray for all of you out there and if um, you could keep us in your prayers, that would be really wonderful. And, um, and if you'd like to support our journey, then go ahead and um, click the button and um, donate some funds to us. That's all I have to say. And um, I know the internet isn't a very kind place, but I am asking for everyone out there to be kind with their words and with their um, thoughts.
thoughts and and keep us all in your prayers. That's it.